One of the fastest ways that you can improve the performance of your Google Ads campaigns is to have a proper system for split testing your ads. Now, even with the introduction of responsive search ads, and in case you don't know, responsive search ads or RSAs is where you give Google up to 15 different headlines and four different descriptions, and then Google chooses which two or three headlines and two descriptions to show when your ad appears. Now, even though they do run some good split testing, the problem with just relying on responsive search ads is that it takes Google anywhere between two to 3,000 impressions in a 30-day period in order to complete a round of split testing. So if you count that out across 15 different headlines, you can see that there is countless different combinations and you can just begin to calculate the number of impressions that it would need to complete proper split testing. So by doing manual split testing, you're able to force some certain split tests so that you can get results in a much quicker fashion. So even right now in 2023, split testing is still alive and well in Google Ads and it is a required skill. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna take you through the exact process of how to undertake the correct split testing for your ad copies in Google Ads. Now, just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young, I'm from Define Digital Academy, and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And if you wanted to make sure that you're completing all of the correct optimization actions for your Google search campaigns in 2023, I wanna give you access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. And this is a checklist that not only lets you know all of the different optimization actions that you need to be completing, but it also lets you know when you need to complete them. Whether it needs to be every seven days, every week, hang on, seven days is a week, every seven, every week, every month, or every 90 days. And you can get free access to my Google Ads optimization checklist right now, just by following that link in the description below. But let's now jump into a screen share so that I can break down the process of how you go about completing a split test in 2023. Let's go. Okay, so what you wanna do in here, and I've already come straight down to an ad group, and you can see through here, I'm showing you the date range of May through to June. And you can see that in this process, we've gone through and we've completed one round of split tests. Now, I've just gone through and changed this date range to be up to the middle of July because we could see previously before this third ad didn't have any impressions, and that's because we started this, this new ad only recently in the last week. So what I wanna show you in through here is that, let's just go through and look at the results from this started in mid-May through to the end of June. And this is the data that we were looking at. Now, when it comes to split testing, there's two core things that you wanna get right. Firstly, it's the actual split test. So let me just go through and show you these two ads. Now, you can see that this ad, what we're doing in here, we just had all of our headlines and nothing was pinned in. And then when we came to our second ad in here, what we had in here is that we had a keyword insertion but it was pinned into that number one position. So when we look at the, both of these ads, they were exactly the same with the only difference being that th this top ad had a pinned in headline in position one, which was a keyword focus. And when we went across through here, we could see with this split test is that while it did have a, a better click to ratio, the other ad had a really significant better conversion rate. And we can see through here that it had a conversion rate of 8.12% versus 6.63. and when we we're breaking that down to the cost per conversion, there was an $11 difference. So what we did from there is we then paused this ad, we then created a copy of it, and we've set up a new split test. And what we've done in this split test is that it's the same ad, but what we're doing this time is that we're running this test of seeing what happens if we pin open seven days a week into position two. Now, the reason for this business, why we chose that is because that's a core selling point for this business in that they are open seven days a week. And when we look look at this process over the first little bit of July. We can see from these ads, now there's not enough data in there, that we can see that this second ad, so the new ad that we'd set up, has a much higher click-through ratio and also a much higher conversion rate. Now, we still need to get some more data because we're only looking at 92 impressions. So after this 
next 30 days, once we start to see this new ad up at over 3000 impressions, we can then make a decision based on the cost per conversion and the conversion rate. But what I wanna show you in through here is that when you look at these different split tests, you can see that the cost per conversion range is from $63 down to $30. So that's why it's highly, highly important that you're always carrying out manual split tests because it allows you to get better results in a much faster fashion. So when it comes to running successful split tests in your Google Ads campaigns, you wanna make sure that you're following these core principles. And the first one is that when you set up a split test, you need to only be testing one main difference. Now, the reason for why that's so important is because if you've got two different ads and you're testing two or three different things, so you might be testing a different headline pinned into position one, which is going to a different landing page. You don't know whether it's the headline that's pinned into position one or the landing page, which is causing the better or the lower results. So the first thing is, is that make sure when you set up your split test is that you're only setting up one individual split test. So the example I gave you was we were testing the result of what happens when we pin one headline into a different position. So the first test where we pinned into a headline into position one, it didn't work as well. So we paused that, but then when we did a secondary test of pinning a headline into position two, we can see that it's only limited data, but off those first 92 impressions, we're getting a significantly better conversion rate and cost per conversion. So we need to allow that test to continue to run out for the rest of this month until we get the final resolution on that. But as you can see from there, that we are doing it in a systematic fashion. So we're only testing one thing at a time. So we know what is the factor which is causing the difference in the results. The second thing that you wanna do, and this is more practical, is that when you do set up a split test, rather than editing the current ad, you wanna copy the best performing ad, paste it into the same ad group and then make the changes to that new ad that you just copied. The benefit of this is that when you then go through and review your split tests, so I was able to go back and remember that first ad that we were paused, I was able to go back and see what we tested in that ad. So I've got accounts where we've been going through split test processes for over two years. So we can actually now look at that data and we've still got all of the different split tests that we've run. I find that as a really practical step so that you're not going through and retesting things that you've done before. And then finally is that you wanna make sure you're reviewing the right data. Now, the core data that you're looking at is your click-through ratio. So how many times people see your ad versus how many times they click on your ad and then those conversion metrics. And if you get the case where you get one ad where the click-through ratio is higher, but then there's a significant difference on that conversion rate where the ad which may have a lower click-through ratio has a much higher conversion rate, the conversion rate always wins. Remembering because that's what we're wanting to see. Ultimately, we're not just wanting people to click on an ad, we're wanting people to convert. And a little side note that if you do get a case where after 30 days, you're seeing no significant difference between the click-through ratio and the conversion metrics, don't be afraid to just allow that split test to run for another 30 days. And it's not uncommon, sometimes you may need to allow your split test to run for 60 or 90 days before you see a significant difference between those two ads. So that's the process on how you go through and complete proper split testing in 2023. Remember, as I said, if you wanted to get access to my Google Ads Optimization Checklist, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. And finally, it goes without saying that if you wanna see success with your ads, so the ad copy for Google Ads in 2023, you need to make sure that you're writing your ad copy in the right way. And if you would like to learn more about the four key elements that you need for success with your ad copy right now, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.